Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the second in a series of videos where we are looking at creating reusable styles for several UI controls that we use in Swift UI. If you haven't already watched the one on custom button styles, I suggest you do that first as this follows it closely. I'll leave a link in the description below. Creating a library of custom styles will speed up your development in the future by giving you reusable components that you can use in any project. In this video, we're going to create some configurable styles for toggles. Now, throughout the process, we'll dig into the documentation so you can learn how to further enhance your styles and create new ones. If this is something you want to learn, then keep watching. There's no starter project for this video, so I'm going to take you through the entire process from scratch. The first thing you need to do is create a new SwiftUI project. It'll be an iOS app using SwiftUI interface and the SwiftUI app lifecycle. My intent here is to show you how to create reusable styles and how you can use them to be more consistent in your application design. You can call the project whatever you want, but I'm going to call mine Toggle Styling. Swift and SwiftUI have a control that's known as a toggle. It's basically a button with a label, and the button switches between two states, either on or off. We create a toggle by first creating a Boolean variable that can be bound to the toggle so that when it's tapped, it can toggle between true and false. This can be a state variable in the same file or a binding or property from an observed object. On LIS, there is no native control that is a checkbox. And a checkbox has two states, either checked or not. And this is the same functionality as a toggle. So why don't we create a toggle that when we apply a custom style to it, it will turn out to be a checkbox. For our purposes then, let's create two state Boolean variables called checkbox1 and checkbox2. And we'll give them both an initial value of false. In the body of our content view, I'll replace the default text view with a vStack containing two toggles. For the first toggle, we'll give it a label of checkbox1, and for the second, checkbox2. This looks pretty good in preview, but let's also add some padding to the vStack. As I mentioned, I'm going to be following the same process as I did when we introduced button styles. So again, if you've not watched it, I'd recommend that you do so. Just like with button having a button style protocol, toggles have a toggle style protocol. Let's start by creating a new struct in the content view and we'll call it checkbox toggle style and we'll conform it to the toggle style protocol. As with buttons, this creates an error asking us to conform to the protocol. And again, as with buttons, this requires the make body function. The argument is again a configuration and it returns some view. If I option click on the configuration, it shows me that it's a toggle style configuration, not a button style configuration. So let's explore that more by digging deeper into the documentation by clicking on that link for the toggle style configuration documentation. As we know, the toggle has a state and this is set on the property is on for the configuration. This means that we can create a button in our make body function that will toggle this property. And the label of our toggle is represented by the label struct property for the configuration. Perfect. So if we return to our code, we can create a view that is an H stack containing the configuration label along with a button that will toggle the is on property. The action for the button will just be configuration.isOn toggle. And the label for our button will no longer be text. This is where it gets interesting. It can be any view we like, including images. If I take a look at the SF Symbols app for developers, I can search for checkmark and I see I have a number of different options. The one that I like is this checkmark.square. And I can use this to represent the is on state of true. 
So I'll copy the name to the clipboard so that I can use it to create my image. I can set my image based on the value of the configuration.isOn property. So when configuration.isOn, I'll use that checkmark.square. Otherwise, I'll just use the SF symbol square. This should be good enough to test now. I can assign this style to our two toggles. I'll start with the toggle style modifier and pass in an instant of our new checked box toggle style struct. It looks pretty good, and when I preview, I see that it's working as expected. But we can do better. I don't like the fact that this is using the accent color of blue, and I think it's too small and too close to the label itself. Well, that's easy enough to fix. We can apply some style modifiers to our button in our toggle style. I'll set a padding of 5, a font of type Title 3, and I'm going to change the accent color of the button to the same color as the label. That looks pretty good. Sometimes, however, I'd like to have the checkbox before the label instead of after. I want to have that as an option. So, I'll create a Boolean variable in our checkbox toggle style struct, and I'll call it isReversed, and set it to false as the default. Now in our HDAC, we can conditionally present the configuration.label depending on the value of isReversed. So if not isReversed, we'll display the configuration.label before the button. If it is reversed, we'll display it after. So let's apply that property then to our second toggle. Perfect. This is a great style to reuse in a different project as needed. So let me cut it out of here first to keep it on my clipboard. And as with button styles, I'm going to create a new file, and this time I'll call it custom toggle styles. I need to change the import to Swift UI and I can paste in our clipboard right here. For our second toggle, I'm going to get a little bit more creative. I always have to warn people here that I'm not a designer, so I'm sure you can do a better job, but I want to create a toggle that will look more like a switch with an on and off position and allow me to specify the color I want, like this. When we create our custom style for the checkbox, we alternated between two different images. And in this case, we want to alternate between these two states, but an image just won't do. We want to make sure that there is some animation in showing the state change. So the first thing I need to do is design this new switch view. Eventually I'll store the view as part of the custom style that I'm going to be creating. But for the purposes of design and checking the design, I want to create a temporary file in SwiftUI so I can view it in the preview. I'm just going to call it toggle item. The way I see this is that we have a rounded rectangle with a stroke overlay with another rounded rectangle that is filled with some color but only half the width. So let's try this. Let's create a rounded rectangle with a corner radius of 5 and a frame width of 60 and a height of 20. Now this is a solid rectangle, and I just want to have a stroke, and we need to add the stroke with a color before we set the frame. So let's set it initially as red. For the overlay, we'll just use another rounded rectangle with the same corner radius, but with a fill of the same color, and a frame of only half the width, but the same height. Now the overlay centers it, so we can change that by adding in an alignment property to the overlay of dot meeting. Now we want this to be variable, so we can create a new Boolean property for our view and call it isOn 
and set it initially to false. Then we can adjust our alignment based on the value of is on. So for example, if is on, we can set it to leading, else it will be trailing. And when I set is on to true, it reverses it. I think this is backwards. So let's switch our leading and trailing. All we have to do is make sure that our button in our custom style will set the is on variable. So let's cut out this view now and delete this file as we no longer need it. I'm going to return to my content view and I can now create my custom toggle style struct and I'll make sure that it conforms to the toggle style. Again, this requires the make body function. And before I code this, let me paste in that custom toggle item view in here so that we can use it. As with the checkbox style, we start with an H stack where the first item is the configuration.label, and the second is a button that has an action that will toggle the configuration.isOn property. The button's label is our toggle item, and the isOn property of toggle item is the same as our configuration.isOn. It's as simple as that. With that done, we can create a new toggle and assign this style to it. So we'll need a new state variable for the toggle. So I'll just call it toggle1. And again, it's set to false initially. And I'll create the toggle now using this with a label of text with the string toggle me. And now I can assign the toggle style. Testing this now, we see that we have a functional custom toggle. But let's make it a little bit more customizable by adding a color property to the style, and we'll set it with a default value of red. And in toggle item, I'll add a color property without the default. And while we're at it, we don't need a default value on is on, we just need to make sure that its type is specified as a bool. And now I can replace the red in the fill with this color property. This requires now that we add this argument in our call to toggle item too. And to spice it up just a bit, let's enclose the entire H stack in a group box. We can now see the group box enclosing our red toggle switch. No need to add a color argument as red is our default. But let's create a second toggle. First by creating the toggle state variable. And then we just copy and paste this first toggle, but bind it to this toggle two and change the label. With this one, however, I will pass in an argument of color.blue. I see I've missed something here. The stroke is still red. So down in the toggle item, I need to replace the stroke color with our variable color. That's better. The only thing that bothers me here is that the switch from on to off or off to on is not smooth enough for me. I can fix this by going to our toggle item struct and adding an animation function to our rounded rectangle so that the switch from trailing to leading or leading to trailing will be animated. And I'll use a linear animation with a duration of 0.2 seconds. That's perfect. Let's cut out this entire custom toggle style now and return to our custom toggle styles file where we can paste it in. Here we have now another reusable set of styles that we can use in any project.
I have lots of other videos available and in the queue as well, so please check out the rest of my channel. You can also visit my website to see the apps that I have available on the App Store and visit my GitHub page to see what I have available as public repositories. If you like what you've seen, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And ring the bell to get notified when I post new videos. I'm most active on Twitter, so please follow me there as well to find out what else I'm up to. Thanks for watching.